Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Return to House on a Haunted Hill. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In an apartment, Ariel, an editor of a fashion magazine, receives many calls from her sister Sara, the survivor of the first episode. Sara's voice is frantic and sounds agitated, asking Ariel to call her back, but she just shuts the phone and goes to work. As soon as she enters the building, Ariel's secretary immediately bombards her with meeting schedules and workloads. However, Ariel seems to be handling them well, and even visits her photographer friend, Paul. On the other hand, a paranormal professor lectures a room full of students about angels and demons. He mentions the opposing movement of the Catholic Church during the Middle Ages, called the Cult of the Demon Baphomet. The Baphomet statue has been missing for centuries, despite the numerous people trying to find it, and Professor has been searching for it for decades. After the lecture, Professor's flirtatious student assistant, Ms. Flirt, flirts with the Professor during the book signing event. And so, as soon as the event's over, Professor and Ms. Flirt perform a smelly workout in the office. However, they get interrupted by Professor's other student assistant, called Assistant for short. He tells a piece of news about the survivor, Sarah. Simultaneously, while Ariel converses with Paul, she receives a phone call from her mother. It turns out that Sarah had taken her own life after that incident. Ariel feels guilty for depriving attention to her sister and focusing more on her work. So later that night, she and Paul go to Sarah's apartment. They are astounded by the numerous newspapers plastered on the walls as they enter the flat. They contain information about the massacre in a mental hospital, where the doctor in charge, Dr. Richard, went insane and tortured his patients to death. The mental institute was converted into a private residence eight years later, and the owner had a party and one of the attendees was Sara. However, the party went crazy, and the guests got killed for some unknown reason. Sara was one of the people who survived, but she had a different idea about what happened. She believed that the house was haunted, and that ghosts killed the guests. As expected, no one believed her, even her sister Ariel, who had stopped talking to her. As they wander around, Ariel sees a vision of Sarah's ghost, saying that Ariel must help them. Then suddenly, Professor comes in and informs the two that Sarah contacted him two weeks ago. It turns out that Sarah has Dr. Richard's journal in her possession. According to the journal, the Baphomet statue is in Los Angeles, inside the Hill House. Sarah was supposed to come with Professor and help him find it. This enraged Ariel, as she knows that Sarah was terrified of that house, which brought her nightmares. However, Professor wants to know where the journal is, as Sarah told him that someone was following her. The Baphomet statue is worth millions of dollars to a collector, and other interested parties are looking for it. After their encounter with Professor, Paul drives Ariel home. He waits for Ariel to get inside before starting the engine, when he suddenly sees something in his rear mirror. Meanwhile, as Ariel settles down on the couch, she sees some package on the table, she opens the brown one, and finds Dr. Richard's journal. Then suddenly, she hears a knock, so she opens the door, thinking it is Paul. Paul attempts to warn Ariel, but it is too late, as an armed thug group barges in led by their leader, who would like to be called Thug Boss. Thug Boss confesses that he killed Sara, and made it look like her death was a suicide. Thug Boss is the one after Dr. Richard's journal to find the Baphomet statue. He wanted Sara's cooperation, but she refused, so he killed her. Thug Boss decides to take Ariel and Paul to the Hill House, so as not to snitch on the authorities. On the other side, Professor and his two assistants arrive at the Hill House before Thug Boss's group. As they enter, Assistant questions how the Baphomet statue ended up in the place. Professor replies that Dr. Richard was a prominent art collector, because he believed art could be therapeutic. Professor then gives Assistant and Ms. Flirt the GPR, a device that can emit an electromagnetic signal. It allows them to locate anomalies and hollow spaces, the trio starts their search downstairs when they suddenly hear noises upstairs, so they return to the living room, only to find Thug Boss's group. Ariel is with them, while Paul is outside with one of Thug Boss's men. Professor recognizes Thug Boss because Thug Boss used to be his student, and now he is Professor's competitor. As they bicker, it reveals that Ms. Flirt is a traitor. She used Professor and snitched to the Thug Boss everything she knew about the journal and the Baphomet statue. Suddenly, they hear loud mechanical noises. So Ariel explains that Dr. Richard installed a mechanism to lock the whole asylum, so the patients could not escape. Thereupon, they all find the master control room, and once they do, Dr. Richard's henchmen repeatedly shoot the mechanism. After a few seconds of gunshots, the mechanism stops, stopping the lockdown. After that, Thug Boss reads the journal, which says that the statue is hidden in a secret chamber in the basement. So Thug Boss splits the group to cover more ground as possible. Two of Thug Boss's thugs are assigned to look alone, while Ms. Flirt is with Professor. Assistant goes with a thug, and Ariel pairs with Thug Boss. 
It has not been for a while, when a thug finds something behind the walls using the radar. He makes a small opening to see what is inside, then radios his boss to inform him about it. Suddenly, a hand emerges from the walls. It grabs him, and kills him by pulling out his organs. As it happens, a short flashback clip plays where Dr. Richard put his patients behind the walls and left them to death. On the other hand, while Thug Boss's mall wanders around a room, she comes across two beautiful women. As she sees the women undress, the mall realizes what is happening, and puts her gun down. The women caress her body, and Tom kisses her. Then, another short flashback clip plays. It is the same women making out, when Dr. Richard electrocutes them to death. The mall then feels something sticky on the woman's back. When she looks at them, she finds them rotten. In fear, the mall immediately runs away from the disgusting experience, leaving the two rotting women making out. However, she runs into Dr. Richard, who slices her face, leaving her dead without skin. The mall accidentally pulls the trigger as she falls down, so Thug Boss immediately contacts her men to check it. As Thug Boss is busy, a man's ghost violently pulls Ariel inside a padded cell. The door instantly locks on its own, before Ariel can get out. The man walks towards Ariel, and lets her see a vision, where the man and the rest of the patients and staff took revenge on Dr. Richard for torturing them. The vision ends quickly as it starts, and Ariel sees herself wearing a straitjacket, the clothing used to pacify mentally unstable patients. Ariel screams so loud that even Professor and Ms. Flirt hear her. Thud Boss finally opens the door, but he is confused to see Ariel's wearing a straitjacket. Professor and Ms. Flirt appear, and they are too confused about how Ariel could be wearing it. Outside, someone with a similar voice to Thug Boss instructs the thug to get inside the house. Professor helps Ariel to remove the straitjacket, as she explains the vision. Obviously, the man she saw led an uprising against Dr. Richard the night the asylum burnt down. But Thug Boss and Ms. Flirt do not believe in any ghost shit, so they dismiss Ariel's word and leave the room. Assistant and the bald thug reach the entrance hall, where they see small movements underneath a clothed couch. The bald thug checks it, but there is nothing underneath. He then contacts his boss, when suddenly the fabrics start to move on their own. They wrap themselves around the thug's limbs, lifting him up in the air. Then four phantoms appear holding the fabrics, and they start to pull the material. Assistant attempts to help, but is thrown out. So he can only watch as the phantom tears the bald thug's fat limbs until he explodes into greasy soaps. His fatty organs and blood with diabetes splatter on the floor and on Assistant's dirty body. Assistant screams so loud that all of thug boss's henchmen hear his voice. The rest of the group return to the entrance hall, and see the grotesque scene before them. Despite Ariel telling them they are standing on the thug's remains, Thug Boss still attempts to contact him. Then suddenly, they hear the mechanism working again, starting a lockdown. Ariel uses this as a distraction, and quickly runs to the door. Thug Boss attempts to stop her by shooting her, but she still makes it outside. All the exits are now blocked, so Thug Boss has to keep looking for the statue without Ariel. Shortly after, another thug and Paul appear in the entrance hall, pissing off Thug Boss. The thumb explains that it's him who instructed him to go inside, but Thug Boss argues that he did not. Just then, Ariel returns inside, and explains that the house ordered the thug. They are confused about seeing Ariel, so she adds that the house lets her in, because it wants her to return. Ariel says that according to her sister, the house was seeking revenge, but now it is different. As they bicker, the thug sees someone passing by, so he leaves the entrance hall, and follows it downstairs. A nurse's ghost appears, ties the thug on a wheelchair, and pushes him into a room. Upstairs, their phone starts to ring one by one with an unknown caller. Altogether, they answer, and hear the thug's screams of pain. Dr. Richard slices off the top of his skull, and pulls out his brain, immediately killing him. The nurse stands there with a the massive camera, as Dr. Richard kills another of Thug Boss's henchmen. As things did not go according to plan, Ariel turns the table with the help of the group. She uses the gun she found in Thug Boss's car as protection, while the others forcefully take Thug Boss and Ms. Flirt's gun. Assistant watches the two, as the trio study the house's blueprint. It reveals that the house was connected to a water supply, and a sewer tunnel runs underneath. They can find a sewer gate down the shower area, directly above the drainage system. Professor then remembers that according to Dr. Richard's journal, the statue is guarded by the dead. There is a crematorium inside the asylum, because there was a tuberculosis epidemic during that time. Infected people were cremated at the hospital, but Dr. Richard accepted some of them to minimize the infection. However, Dr. Richard also used the crematorium to kill his patients. This explains Dr. Richard's journal and the short visions. Due to the uprising against Dr. Richard, a fire broke out, and the patients attempted to escape. However, Dr. Richard put the asylum in lockdown, burning his patients alive. Then years later, the ghosts of these patients sought revenge. Later, they figure out that once they find the crematorium, they should find the statue. 
So the group start to take action. As they walk, Professor explains that Dr. Richard was a brilliant physician and great humanitarian, and was even nominated for a Nobel Prize. However, he went from being a respected doctor, to a notorious murderer. The church believed that the statue possessed an evil influence over men. Since Dr. Richard was its owner, the statue manipulated Dr. Richard and his staff to commit inhumane acts. Shortly after, they find a hydro pool, which Dr. Richard used for his patient as a form of therapy. As they inspect the hydro pool, lights start to flick off, even the flashlight they have. Thug Boss uses it as a distraction, and takes the gun from Professor. After that, he fights Assistant, and drops him in the pool. Ariel immediately jumps and saves Assistant, while Thug Boss and Ms. Flirt run away with the house's blueprint. Ariel emerges from the water with Assistant, and she instructs Paul and Professor to find a way to get them out of it, as there is no ladder. However, several cold dead bodies emerge from the water, and surround the two. They let Ariel see what happened to them. In the vision, these patients were forced to do hydropool therapy. However, Dr. Richard left them there for too long, and they soon die from the freezing water. The ghosts then drag Assistant underneath, so Ariel tries to save him again. However, the water is too deep, so she has no choice but to leave Assistant. As soon as she emerges, the two use the chain as a ladder and pull Ariel out of the water. On the other hand, Ms. Flirt and Thug Boss argue as they look for the crematorium. Ms. Flirt does not believe in ghosts, but she is suspicious as they could not contact Thug Boss's men. Thug Boss reasons out that his men are probably after the statue, and suspects Ms. Flirt as a traitor. Thug Boss aims his gun at her, so she explains that she is not a traitor. However, Thug Boss refuses to put the gun away, so Ms. Flirt has to run away from him. She hides inside the dining room, and holds the door shut as she hears Thug Boss's voice. However, she notices something strange happening behind. She turns around and finds that the appliances and furniture are floating. The chairs drop one by one, hitting Ms. Flirt at the back of her head. She falls down from the impact, and sees Dr. Richard standing in front of her. Dr. Richard looks up to the refrigerator, and then smiles at Ms. Flirt as it drops on her head, killing her. Meanwhile, the trio finds the sewer gate in the shower area, which leads outside the asylum. However, they cannot go out because of the iron grating. Suddenly, a pair of hands appear from the gate, holds Ariel, and lets her see where to find the statue. The same man from the padded room is in the vision, and he begs Ariel to destroy the statue. The vision ends, so Ariel shares that spirits are trapped in the asylum, because the evil statue will not let them leave. Thereupon, the trio finds the crematorium area. They get inside a furnace, which leads them to a secret chamber. Inside, they finally find the statue, and it quickly entices Professor. So Paul removes him out of the way. Ariel repeatedly shoots the statue, but the bullet bounces off, not even leaving a scratch. So Ariel decides to remove the statue from the house by the sewer gate. She forcefully takes it from its position, and they immediately run upstairs as they notice the house shaking. Thug Boss appears as they exit the furnace and stops them when burnt ghosts grab him. They put him inside a furnace and cremate him alive. A vision then plays, with numerous sick patients begging Dr. Richard to save them, but he just watches his staff burn them alive. The ghosts then attack them. A trio immediately runs, but Paul stumbles. Ariel and Professor have to abandon the shitty Paul, as they need to get the statue out of the house. They run to the shower area, attempting to drop the statue, but Professor suddenly attacks Ariel. They engage in a fight, as Ariel tries to wake up Professor from the possession of the statue. Dr. Richard then appears, lifts Professor, and repeatedly bangs his head on the walls. His blood with diabetes starts to splatter from the impact. Meanwhile, Ariel immediately reaches for the statue, and drops it on the sewer gate. The strong water current directly flows it out of the hill house, setting the spirits free and at peace at last. Because of that, the lockdown and the curse on the house have lifted, but it is too late as Professor is already dead. Ariel returns to the entrance hall, where she meets Paul. The two exit the house, but Ariel begins to worry, as she realizes that they set free the Baphomet statue, which has been kept in for 50 years. The film ends with a nasty couple doing naked exercise on the beach sand. The woman feels something underneath the sand, so they dig it up, and find the Baphomet statue, unaware of the power and evilness it possesses. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.